discussion. Okay. For this afternoon's discussion, we will be discussing regarding your carbohydrates. Okay, we will be discussing regarding your carbohydrates. Of course, our objectives for this topic is that for number one, for us to define or to describe what is carbohydrates. Second, for us to know um, the chemical, chemical and physical characteristics of that of our um, carbohydrates as well, or shall we say the chemical and physical properties of that of our carbohydrates uh, to enumerate no, the classification of carbohydrates as well as the members of each classification and also to look into the significance of each examples of those carbohydrates. So those are our objectives for this afternoon. No? I guess you have prepared for this one or you have knowledge already with regards uh, to our discussion. No? Uh, maybe some of you have already read the, the materials given to you last Saturday which have given to you as an activity. And I hope that everyone can participate if, if ever you're given the chance to um, participate no? in the discussion. Of course, for this afternoon, our dear Muslims, brother and sisters were exempted for the class uh, due to their preparation for such uh, event na, in their religion. Okay, so now let's start with the discussion. When we talk about our carbohydrates, okay, our carbohydrates are the most abundant organic constituent, particularly found in our plants okay and they serve as the major source of chemical energy for living organisms such as that of sugars and starch which are usually found in our plant no in the usual plant that we eat thus it is as well as important constituent for supporting tissues like the cellulose no wherein cellulose is present no, in that of the structure of our plants, no? yung cellulose, sa cell wall ng ating plants, present itong si cellulose. Okay, to continue, our carbohydrates, okay, our carbohydrates has a, has a, chemical formula of CN, so ibig sabihin yan, N stands for the number of carbons, then H2O, we multiply it with the number of carbon. Okay, We multiply it to the number of carbon. And it's usually defined as polyhydroxy aldehyde and ketones or substance that hydrolyze to yield polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketones. Before moving into this one, of course, our carbohydrate is a product uh, primarily, no? uh, in addition to the introductory part kanina sa previous slide, no? um, our carbohydrate is part of the product of that of our plants, particularly a product of that of photosynthesis. Now, if you could still remember, no? what is the formula for photosynthesis? Any idea, guys? Before moving to this um, section, no? ano nga ba yung formula? Ano yung requirements in order to build carbohydrates by, by plants during plant photosynthesis? It needs. Ano yung mga requirement? Carbon ano dioxide. Yung, okay, so, it needs carbon dioxide, of course. Water or H2O. Water at the same time. Yes. Light okay. or energy. Light energy. Carbon. Okay, light energy. No? Tsaka yung sunlight. Or light energy wherein it will be converted into light energy known as your photon, okay? Which in return will yield you your, okay? Your carbohydrate, okay? Your carbohydrate plus ano yung isang product pa of photosynthesis aside from, okay? 
your oxygen. Kaya very important yung role ng ating plants no? in the environment as it replaces the carbon dioxide no? to oxygen. No? So yung mga carbon dioxide na which could be toxic in higher level will be absorbed by that of the plants utilized for the photosynthesis process and then in return, uh, the plant will expel oxygen. And with that, that is part of the function of our plant. So going back here, no, um, this is the formula for your carbohydrates. No? So for example, for example, if the number of carbons in a carbohydrate is six, so that is pertaining to your glucose, six carbon monosaccharides glucose. So for example, the number of carbon is six. So Given this formula, CNH2ON, so C6H2O times 6. So if we convert it, no, it's C6H12O6, of course. No? That is the, the other chemical um, structure. No, of your carbohydrate. So with that, C6H12O6 is your glucose, no? given that it is a 6-carbon carbohydrate or sugar. Okay. Those, okay, again, as mentioned, they are um, termed as polyhydroxyaldehydes and ketones. Um, take note, muna, bago H2O, bakit H2O? Because we consider carb, we consider your carbohydrates as hydrates of carbon. No? And then it is known as polyhydroxy, polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone because it follows such um it follows such um chemical uh, structure for aldehyde, which is a functional group and a ketone group. So with that, ano ba yung, ano bang palatandaan natin na it is uh, an aldehyde or ketone? For an aldehyde na glucose, uh, aldehyde na sugar, it has a formula of R cho, no? R meaning katong kato, it means na chain of hydrocarbons no? chain of hydrocarbon with CHO. No? On the other hand naman, pag ketone, it's your R, O, R. Okay, chain of carbon connected to O and then another carbon, no? R, O, R. Kaya siya tinawag na, uh, kaya siya tinawag na polyhydroxyaldehyde and ketone kasi yung pattern ng kanyang functional group, yung, yung functional group niya, contains either an aldehyde or an a ketone. Kaya ang ating sugar could be classified to, to uh, either aldo sugar, no aldo sugar or ketos sugar, no? So we have your aldoses and ketoses. Do you follow, students? Do you follow on yes, this one? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Sige, let's continue. Okay, so they are defined as polyhydroxylated compounds with at least three carbons. No? Ang number of carbons ng isang carbohydrate is at least three carbon atom that may or may not possess a carbonyl group. Okay, and usually the building blocks of your carbohydrate is your monosaccharides. No? Your monosaccharides and your monosaccharides are bind together or connected together by what we so called as your glycosidic bond. The bond that binds one monosaccharide to another. So again, car your carbohydrate is either a ketone derivative or an aldehyde derivative. So simple carbohydrates are known as sugars or saccharide, uh, wherein the la it comes from the lactose the Latin word, which is saccharum, which means sugar. 
And the ending of the name of most sugars is OSE, no? or O's, such as glucose, which is the principal sugar in our blood, your blood glucose. We have your fructose, sugar that is usually found in fruits and in honey. Sucrose, sucrose rather, which is known as an our as our ordinary table sugar. Yung ginagamit natin sa pagtetempla ng mga juice, ng mga coffee, gatas, no? yung sugar na ginagamit natin. And then we have your maltose, of course, which is uh, for, for malt sugar on the other hand. Of course, um, um, how is your glucose being synthesized? No? Or, or kumbaga, not rather synthesized, but rather breakdown uh, in addition to this one. No? Um, how are these sugars being breakdown? It is through the process of, diba, we're talking about glycosidic bond for um, linkage between monosaccharide to another. Uh, the process of breakdown of your glucose is, of course, through the process of glycolysis. So when we get to your finals, no? when we get to your finals, uh, we will be discussing regarding the different metabolic processes of your sugar, lipids, and among others. Okay. Okay, classification of your carbohydrates according to the number of sugar molecules. Okay, so we can classify them based on the number of sugar. Um, yes, connecting sugars. Pag sinabing mono sa simple carbohydrates, we have your mono and di. Pag, si pag sinabing mono, it has one unit. Pag uh, disaccharide, it means two units of monosaccharide. Okay, two units of monosaccharides, pag disaccharide. Okay, one unit pag um, simple. Okay, question, what are examples of our monosaccharides? What are examples of our monosaccharides? Students. Of course, okay, going back here. There may be a maraming answer. No? If the question is, will, uh, can you give me examples of monosaccharides? Maraming answer in terms of monosaccharides based on the number of carbons. No? So, mag-differ siya in terms of the number of carbons. At the same time, mag-differ siya if it is an aldose or a keto sugar ba siya. No? With number... Number of carbons is three and above, no? No, three and above. Like for example, um, for all those, it, the three carbon is known as your trioses, no? Trioses. Ang three carbons naman dito sa ketos natin, if ever, on three carbons, tinatawag natin trioloses, no? Trioloses. Yun naman. You can search it through the net naman. Uh, classification of important simple sugars or class classification of simple sugars uh, based on the number of carbons as to all those and keto sugars. So with that, you can see examples of those simple monosaccharides natin na sugars. And then we have your disaccharides. Na? Meron lang naman tayong um, tatlong basic examples of your disaccharides. No, can you give me those three common examples of your disaccharides, students? Who can give me? Students? Who can give me the three common examples of our disaccharides wherein these are products of condensation of two monosaccharides? Lactose po, maltose at sucrose. Okay, we have your lactose, sucrose, and okay, we have your lactose, sucrose, and maltose. maltose. Okay. 
<laughs> another one, another one under disaccharide is your cellulose, no? Later on, madidiscuss naman natin kung ano yung mga combinations nito, no? Of course, for mo- of course, this um this na mga disaccharides, no, are usually 6 carbon na to sila, no? 6 carbon um carbohydrates. For monosaccharides naman na 6 carbons, of course, we have your glucose, we have your um fructose and also we have your ano yung isa glucose fructose at saka yung inyong galactose no yun naman yung common 6 carbon uh, monosaccharide sugars natin Okay, continue. Meron naman tayong mga complex carbohydrates. So, pag sinabing complex, it contains more than 3, no? 3 to 10 units of of your uh, 3 to 10 or more than 10 of your units of your monosaccharides. So, we have for example, we have your oligosaccharides which contains 3 to 10. So, may limit siya pag 3 to 10 units of sugar, then it is under oligosaccharides. If it is more than 10 units, then it is under polysaccharides. Then we have also complex carbohydrates which are significant in the body. No? You have your stored sugar which is your glycogen and also your starches. No? Mga stored sugar man natin ito. At the same time, we have also our fibers. Okay, so those are the uh, our examples under complex carbohydrates. So later on, we will uh, there will be discussion on ano ba yung mga example ng ating oligosaccharides, na? Ano yung mga example ng ating oligosaccharides? Usually, your oligosaccharides are by usually your oligosaccharides are byproducts, na? They are byproducts of the hydrolysis of your polysaccharides. Kasi minsan, um, yung mga polysaccharides natin, pag na-hydrolyze na siya or na-breakdown na yung bonds ng ating polysaccharides, sometimes hindi siya basta-basta nabibreakdown into one single unit which is your glucose. Some of it will be breakdown, no? some of it will be breakdown as to more than 10 units or it could be around three. Ah, I usually, I mean, what I mean is that your polysaccharides will break down not directly into one single unit, but rather it could be divided into three, five, ten units no, of those carbohydrates. Kaya nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na byproduct natin na oligosaccharides. So later on, malalaman natin yung mga examples under oligosaccharides. Hello, sir. Parang naka-off mic. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, going back. Again, your monosaccharide, like for example, your glucose here, are simple carbohydrate wherein upon hydrolysis or attempt of hydrolysis, there will no breakdown of it into simpler sugar. Unlike your disaccharide that upon hydrolysis, it will break down into two monosaccharide, which may be the same or different. No? For example, of your disaccharide is your sucrose, wherein your sucrose can be can be 
uh, break down into glucose plus your fructose, no? So that yan yung combination di ba ng ating sucrose. On the other hand, naman pag sinabing oligosaccharide coming from the Greek word um, oligos, no? which means few, yields three to ten mono uh, ten to ten to three monosaccharides unit on hydrolysis. Like for example, your raffinose. Okay. Okay, so. So, yun yung pinagkaiba ni mono, di, at saka ni oligosaccharides, no? Based on the number of carbohydrates that might be present upon hydrolysis, no yield upon hydrolysis. Okay, so now let's uh, focus now on your car, uh, monosaccharides, no? Let's focus now in your monosaccharides. Okay, but before that, okay, uh, before this one, let's uh, let's go back first here. Now, I've given you an example. Sucrose is glucose plus fructose. Of course, other pa na mga disaccharide natin is we have your lactose. At the same time, we have your uh, maltose. Pag sinabing, pag sinabi natin, um, Lactose, it is the combination of what? Anong combination ng monosaccharide meron ang ating lactose students? Any answer from the students? Lactose, and then also we have maltose. Ano yung combination? Lactose, lactose will... at glucose po. Okay, for lactose, it can be hydrolyzed to galactose plus glucose. How about your maltose? Your maltose is composed of malt and glucose. It is made up of two units of glucose. No? Two units of glucose. See maltose. Okay? Don't forget about that. Of course, as we all know, no? Your uh, for example here, um, the monosaccharide galactose is also known as milk sugar. No? Your galactose. So as with your lactose. Okay. So those are just examples of it. No, those are just some examples of it. Okay, let's proceed now to monosaccharides. So again, going back to monosaccharides, these are consists of only one saccharide or sugar unit and they are non-hydrolyzable. Take note that they are non-hydrolyzable. So yung mga common board exam question in this one would be, which of the following is an example of an hydrolyzable sugar? Or which of the following is not a hydrolyzable sugar? No? So, yun yung mga questions. So, again, for monosaccharides, non-hydrolyzable. So, pag nag-hydrolysis siya, it will not yield any sugar. No? So, they are subclassified according to number of carbons present in the molecule and the type of car carbonyl group that they contain. So, with that, kung the number of carbon atoms present in, the, in their molecule so therefore based on number no we have your triosis um pentosis no uh, triosis for example pentosis for five carbons hexosis diba heptosis no and so on and so forth based on the number of carbons of your um, carbohydrate. On the other hand naman, based on the presence of carbon carbonyl group, classifying it as to aldose or keto sugar. Do you follow, students? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So, over 200 different monosaccharides are known. 
monosaccharides are class classified and, um, according to number of carbon present in a molecule or whether they contain an aldehyde or ketone group based on the carbon in the group. Na? So with that, uh, yun na nga yung mga example ko kanina under number of carbon atoms present in the molecule like 6 carbon carbohydrate hexoses, pentoses for 5 carbons and so on and so forth. So a monosaccharide Okay. containing three carbon atoms are called trios. One carbon containing uh, one containing four carbon of atoms are known as tetros. No? Trios, tetros, pentose, hexose, no? heptose for number seven. Then ano ba ang, ano ba ang eight carbon, chaka nine carbon, chaka ten. No? So can you check on the net no? may mga available na mga, na, mga tables no, but which, which represents the classification of monosaccharides based on the number of carbons. Then we have a monosaccharides containing an aldehyde group is called an aldose and the keto group is known as keto. So later on, we'll see a structure of this one. Okay. So let's proceed here. So we have an aldose. No? Diba? This is your R. No? And R C double band O H or okay R C di ba ang kwan to is R cho no so this ito yung R natin no yung parang hydrocarbon chain and then C H O no R cho other on the other hand naman it's your R O R your ketos no this is your this is your first R this is your C double band OR. C double band OR. And then this is your another R. Do you get it, students? Yes, po, sir. So, yan yung pag distinguish natin ng structure of a ketose and an aldose. Usually, pag aldose gani, pag aldose, ang iyahang hydrogen or shall we say the oxygen rather the carbonyl group is at the terminal always remember pag aldo sugar nasa terminal um pag pag sa ketos naman nasa second carbon siya okay second carbon so what that, that is the difference in terms of their chemical structure so we have here other examples like aldotetrosis or your C4. So counting from one, two, three, and four. No, four carbons. On the other hand, we have your al your keto pentose, kasi in the sense na nasa second carbon yung oxygen or your carbonyl group. This is your carbonyl group, no? Yan yung carbonyl group mo. So with that, we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Do you follow? Okay ba tayo? Students, so that, yes, is, how, sure. that is how we identify the structure, no? or the what you call this. Um, we identify the functional groups of the structure. Okay. Now let's proceed to the DNL designations of monosaccharides. So dextro rotatory and level rotator rotatory and this can be determined through the use of our what is so called as your polarimeter no ito yung instrument na ginagamit no polarimeter in order to check if it is a dextro rotatory or level rotatory if it's ibig yan, if yung chemical structure ba is uh, right handed or left handed no so the simplest monosaccharide known is your glyceraldehyde. Okay. The simplest uh, okay, the simplest monosaccharide known is your glyceraldehyde. So from the word itself aldehyde, so therefore that is an aldo sugar with three carbons, no? Aldose with three carbons, your glyceraldehyde. Kasi um, ang ketone, ang ketone na may three carbon, three carbon is known as your um, dihydroxy 
acetone. No? So, dihydroxyacetone, tone, ketone. So, that is the counterpart naman in the ketone group. So, again, the simplest one is your aldose sugar na tricarbon glyceraldehyde which contains a stereocenter. Therefore, it exists in two enantiomeric form. You're either dextrorotatory or levorotatory. Okay? So, meron siyang, okay, again, si glyceraldehyde has um, two forms, your dextro and levorotatory glyceraldehyde. So, the two compounds serve as configurational standards for all monosaccharides. So, siya yung nagiging standard ng mga monosaccharides natin in terms of their configuration as to levo or dextro. So, mas maintindihan natin siya if meron tayong structure, no? Structure ng ating levo at dextro glyceraldehyde. Okay. So, this is the structure of your glyceraldehyde, no? As you can see here, pag sinabing dextro, most of its uh, most of its OH group, ang functional niya na OH group, is on the, okay, particularly this, no, is on the right side. Kaya nga, tinatawag siya na dextrorotatory. Pag sinabing levorotatory naman, yung OH niya, most of the OH, especially Hindi la, ito siya, tatlo lang kasi tricarbon glyceraldehyde lang naman. Pero pagdating na sa 4, 5, 6 carbon atoms, if mostly gani sa OH niya na sa right, then that is dextro. No? If most of the OH is on the left side, then therefore, that is your levorotatory glyceraldehyde. Do you follow, students? Yes, then nalang yes, siya, nalang siya designation na D positive tsaka level negative. Okay, so yun yung kaniyang structure. Okay, to continue. A monosaccharide whose highest number stereocenter, uh, the penultimate carbon, has the same configuration as D glyceraldehyde is designated as a D sugar. And one whose highest number is stereoisomer that has the same configuration as L negative glyceraldehyde designates an L sugar or a level rotatory. So D and L designation are not related to the optical rotation of a sugar to which they are applied. So with this example, ah, wala tayong example dito. But anyways, yun na nga yun na mention ko. Mapa 4 carbon sugar man siya, 4 carbon, 5 carbon, 6, and so on, and so forth, no? Etc. If ever again, pag right, uh, left tanan, then uh, mostly of the OH is left, that is level. Pag most the OH is right, that is uh, dextro rotatory. Okay, so now let's proceed to um, the way how the structural formulas of monosaccharide have been uh, written. No? Especially itong dalawang ito. Especially itong dalawang ito. Fisher projection and Haworth formulas. Okay, when we talk about Fisher projection, yung uh, similar doon sa kwa natin, um, Yung similar sa nakita natin na structure kanina. Those, this is an example of your this is an example of your Fisher no? projection. No? Fisher projection ito siya. Pag kwa naman, pag Howard naman, no? pag Howard um, formulas naman, easily itong makikita niyo. No? If you see structure like this, uh, ganitong pagkasulat ng structure, this is your Howard, okay, Howard formula. 
iba naman for alpha anomer and beta anomer based on the position naman yan siya ng carbons. So, mostly ang ginagamit is itong Fisher at Howard. Now, in representing the structural formula of your monosaccharides. Okay. Sige. Let's proceed to the next one. Okay. Fisher projection. A Fisher, a Fisher projection A uh, project a, a Fisher projection is represent okay is used to represent carbohydrates. Actually, dito yan siya no. A Fisher projection is used to represent carbohydrates. Places the most oxidized group on top. Okay, and of course that is your carbonyl group. Now the carbonyl group is the most oxidized group at the top. So kaya ito siya. And then. Uh, show chiral carbons as they in, as the inter as the intersection of vertical and horizontal lines. So, ang chiral carbon natin is itong mga carbon na ito, no, which is connected to an OH and an H, no, connected to an OH and an H. So, this in this case, this is the um, chemical formula of your Levo and dextro glyceraldehyde. Do you follow, students? On how, uh, on how the, on how the, what do you call this? How the Fisher formula has been, um, written. No? for example, glucose on this one, so six. Um, glucose na levo rotatory. Level rotatory and then aldose na hex aldo hexos siya. Four, five. Sorry, uh, usap ulit. Um, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you can have it. Kung kwan siya, uh, what you call this? For example, if it is a levorotatory aldo hex, uh, a levorotatory aldo hexose. So aldo hexose man so nasa terminal ang nasa terminal ang ang carbonyl group, right? So double one O. So aldo levorotatory. So therefore, pagdating dito, it's your OH, you know. H, O H, H, O H, H. No. Yan. And then of course this is your C H. Sorry. C H two O H. Yan. So that is kung ang imuhang kuan, ang imuhang kuan is a levorotatory, left-handed na aldo hexose. No? So, yun nga na ang pagsulat po niya. Okay. Or sum up, pwede rin ganito. Dextrorotatory. No? If most of the configuration niya is, or most of the number of OH is on the right side, just like this one, no? that is a dextroglucose. No? So again, this is still using a Fisher projection determining dextro and levo isomer. Um, okay, ito naman siya is 5 carbon uh, sugar kasi ribose. 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the 5, no? Ito siya 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is the 6, no? So 6 carbon, 5 carbon. No, that is ribose. Bakit dextro? Kasi mostly are aligned in the right side. No? And then we have your level galactose, which is 6 carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? And then, of course, levo. Kasi most of the OH, okay, most of the OH are found in the, most of the OH are found in the left side. Especially, 
especially um, the one that is connected towards the R group. Especially the one that is connected in the R group is found in the kung asa na direction. Si yun din siya ang basihan. Do you get me, students? Do you follow? Kaya kanin siya tong R group, di ba? Kanin si H2OH, muna siya to ang R group. And then kung unsa tong pinakaunang OH, kung asa yan direction mostly, then that is the basis for the extra rotatory and level rotatory. Okay. Continue tayo. Not all carbo carbohydrates exist in equilibrium with six-membered hemiacetal rings. In several instances, the ring is five-membered. If the monosaccharide ring is six-membered, the compound is called as six-pyranose. Okay, six-pyranose. So in a ring structure, okay, in a ring structure of your, of your, glucose na no? six carbon in your glucose ang tawag nato sa yaha is again pyranose if ang ring structure sa mong sugar is five member carbon lang siya then that is a pyranose such as that for example you have your beta dextro glucose pyranose beta dextro ribo ribo pyranose so example here um, this is pertaining to Howard projection na, no? You are using Howard projection. So it's either it is a pyranose or a furanose. Do you follow, people? Do you follow? Yes, sir. Okay, for example, for this one, one, two, three, four, five, no? Okay, I know. Ito pa, included to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a pyranose. Glucopyranose. No? That is your glucopyranose. Ito siya. Ito naman. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Five only. This is your fructofuranose. No, kasi one, two, three, four, five lang naman na carbon. Itong isa. A okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is your sucrofuranose. Itong isa naman, or sucrose pa rin siya. No? Itong isa is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is your sucrose. Okay, sucro. Okay. Wait lang ha. Sucrofuranose. So, but still, they are, kumbaga, um, ay, um, eratum, uh, eratum sa gitlang pas. Um, oh, yan, tama yung pagka, tama yung pagka, Kuan ko sa kuan niya. As to pyranose or furanose siya na type of kuan, Howard projection. But still remember ha, all in all, all in all, uh, six carbon sugars, gapo ni sila. It's just that if we try to count it based on the number of carbons in the ring, it could be written as to six carbon ring or five carbon ring siya. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng Howard formula. Okay? Under Howard formula. Okay. So, next we have how to convert how to convert your 
um, your formula, no? your Fisher formula to how work. Okay? How to convert your Fisher formula to how work. Okay. So, usually we start our carbon number one in the carbon in the carbon we're in the carbonyl group now we're in the carbo uh, we're in the carbonyl group is attached or the double band o so we have this is one no medyo na atras lang konti 2 3 4 5 and number 6 carbon so you can also um you can also have it in this way no yung paggawa natin ng fissure projection no pa vertical and horizontal do you follow students yes po sir to convert um, your vertical to horizontal fissure um, structure then pagkatapos naman okay you have your um ito naman is your this is your um how work na, na formula okay so with that, okay, the start of number of the start of that of the numbering carbon number one is in this part. No? Kanila lang nagbibilang na ako na number of carbon. Dito ako nagsimula pero the of ang antaw natin dito, uh, yung standard of placing number, counting the number is the one that is kasi itong O, ito yung parang carbonyl group A. Eh. Ito yung carbonyl group. So the first carbon that attaches the carbonyl group is ito siya. So 1, then 2, then 3, 4, 5, tsaka ito yung number 6. Of course, this is a pyranose, glucopyranose type of Howard projection. No? Bend the chain to make hexagon. Okay? Ba uh, okay? Um, bond the C5 with the O. Okay, bond the C. Parang konektado to siya dito. No? Pinaralel mo siya pagkatapos. From this, yun na nga, ibibend mo siya paunti-unti. No? As you can see here, no? um, iganyan natin. Diba? As you can see here, binend niya si C. Binend niya dito binend niya yung isang bond. So, continue. Under sa Howard projection, under sa Howard projection, if you could notice, wala ng hydrogen sa mga arm. Only the representation of hydroxyl group ang pinakita. Have you noticed? Diba? As you can see here. Diba wala na yung mga OH. So, Kasi parang kumbaga marag as is na siya na meron siyang OH na nakakonek, na no? OH na nakakonek. So with that um okay. So as you can see here so, isang band ng O. ba Double band. So, OH. Tapos, yung isang carbon. Okay? Yung carbon. Isang OH. Which is, ba Carbon number one. So, isang band nito. Kaya ito, OH. No? Isang band ng um, o at saka ng isang H no? OH and then carbon number 2C OH ito and then pagkatapos binend lang siya since dito as you can see here in the Fisher projection nasa ta higher yung nasa upper yung OH ng third carbon so therefore the OH is above no? pagkatapos naman Pag-bend niya dito, number 4 mo nasa baba. No? Nasa left. So, uh, nasa right rather. Pag nasa right, 
pag nasa right, pagdating sa Howard projection, okay? Sa Howard, ang dextro mo, ang OH is nasa baba. If yung sa ang level mo naman, ang OH niya is nasa tata, nasa taas. Do you follow? Kasi pinaralel mo yung uh, yung fissure na projection, di ba? Pinaralel mo siya. Or rather, hinorizontal mo siya. Di ba? Hinorizontal mo siya pagkatapos kinerve. So again, ang nangyari, yung OH na pababa is your dextro. Yung OH na nasa taas is level. Do you follow, students? So this is your carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3 kasi nasa taas yung OH niya. Pagdating sa carbon 4, nasa baba yung OH niya. No? Pagdating sa carbon number 5, okay? Carbon number 5, C. Okay? Um disregard the H. Disregard the H kasi makoconnect mo rin naman. Uh, OH niya. No? Kasi, na, kasi na-connect mo naman siya dito sa O. No? And then, yung connection niya naman dito sa taas is of course the another R group. The R group which is under carbon number 6. Your CH2OH. No? So that is how it was written in an how in a howard in a howard projection okay so ang ganito lang hindi naman kayo papapa in, hindi naman kayo pap ipapadro ng structure during exam and quiz but rather you just need to identify if it is a howard structure a fisher structure if it is a dextro rotatory or a level rotatory So with that again just do have the clue na pag fissure left right di ba left right yung basihan natin sa lalong lalo na sa position ng OH most of the OH particularly uh, most of the OH then if ever gani na if ever na yung OH is magkatulad yung me, same lang yung number ng OH both sides always um always try to refer on the carbon next to the R group kung saan siya left ba or right if ever na magkapareha like for example parehong dalawang OH nandito sa kabila meron ding OH dito sa kabila dalawa you refer on this carbon the carbon next to the R group do you follow For the dextro and level rotatory in a fissure projection, okay. Then, pagdating naman sa Howard, ganon parehong yung carbon na near to the kuan to the R group. If ever na medyo magkapat magkatulad lang yung number ng OH. Pero always remember this, na pag dextro, if most of the OH are down, then that is dextro. If most of the OH are In the upward direction, then that is level. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. See, okay. Let's continue. No. So step three, may step three, sha. So the new OH in C one is drawn. Thus, down for the alpha. Down for the alpha. Okay, down for the alpha num anomer and up for the beta anomer. So, ah, this is pertaining to alpha and beta anomer na structure, naman, na based on your carbon number one, carbon number one, if yung OH mo, if yung OH mo is nasa itaas siya, then that is again, that is your beta, na if yung OH mo sa carbon number one in a Howard projection. Then therefore, that is alpha. Then, tignan natin alpha, alpha D glucose. Kasi most of the OH, 
are located downward. Ah, sorry. Yes, most of the OH are positioned downward. Do you get me? Kasi ba't pag downward yung OH mo, that is dextro. No? Right-handed siya. Then since yung OH position sa first carbon mo is downward, it's an alpha, kaya alpha D-glucose. Ito sa kabila naman, yung OH mo sa carbon number one is in the upper position. No? Nasa upper siya or nasa left side siya. Then mostly naman ng OH is nasa downward position. Then therefore that is a beta D glucose. No? Beta D glucose naman siya. Okay, so that is how we name uh, our carbohydrates, no? particularly the six carbon carbohydrates natin, no? which are in ring structure na carbohydrates based on Fisher, Howard, and alpha and beta anomers. Okay. Then next we have your, proceed tayo dito. Next, we have your hemiacetal. So hemiacetal is a functional group. Okay, it's an acid, it's a functional group consisting of a carbon atom bonded to an alkoxy group or a hydroxyl group. Thus, hemiacetals are synthesized by adding one molar equivalent of an alcohol to an aldehyde or ketone. So ibig sabihin yan, um, addition of hyd um hyd uh, ang tawag din ito addition of OH group no or addition of oxygen so for example ito uh, example natin dito okay so we have here an acetal okay we have here an acetal Hemiacetal, okay. So R may R two may be an H, okay. Maybe a H, yan siya, okay. And then pagkatapos, okay. Uh, addition of hydrogen, okay. Addition of hydrogen um, from your hydrochloric acid, removing, okay. Removing your Removing your H dito, no? At na at na pulihan siya old ini um, R1, no? Na pulihan siya R1 kasi yung yung H dito nagbind siya sa other H forming H2O. Forming H2O. Especially if there is ganito hydrochloric acid in the form of gas and then also the presence of alcohol. Or again, okay, going back. So this is a... An, so again, this is a hemiacetal in addition of alcohol. In addition of alcohol. Oh, bakit merong HCl? Bakit merong HCl? is for the purpose in order to make the reaction fast. Actually, that is the purpose of the HCl. No? Ang mean na to na reactant dere is your quangent, inyong alcohol, no? inyong alcohol. So again, what happened when what happened when your hemiacetal was added with your uh, with your alcohol is that okay? Is that particularly to that of your um, aldehyde or ketone. Okay, aldehyde or ketone. In this case, I think this is for the... Um, this is for the ketone. No? Ketone part. No? So again nga, yun na nga. No? Ang nangyari is that there will be replacement of H. There will be a replacement of H of another R group R group, and then H2O is the other product. So, an acetal. So, with that, uh, what is the purpose of this? No? 
Um, wala ang purpose lang aning hemiacetal is uh, composition lang ng um, aldehyde um, ang purpose lang ng hemiacetal is to determine the um, yung composition lang ng with the composition with um, aldehyde and ketone and its reaction no and its reaction with that of alcohol okay so there will be replacement no there will be replacement in the hemiacetal group. Okay. Anyways, wala naman tayo masyadong um, um, concerns under this one. Okay. Wala tayong masyadong concerns under hemiacetals. Okay. Dito, proceed tayo dito kasi ito yung mas importante, yung regarding your glycoside formation or the formation of your glycosidic bond. Ito, ito yung very important. No? So, carbohydrate acetals, generally called as glycosides, okay? and an acetal of glucose is called as a glucoside. Thus, the methyl D glucosides have been shown to have six membered ring. So, they are properly named as methyl alpha D glucopyranoid. Ay pyranoside and beta di glucopyranoside. Ah, okay. Bakit merong uh, glycosides? Kasi um, going back here under hemiacetal, um, in connection with your glycoside formation, kasi um, if there is presence of um, acetal, therefore, nagkakaroon ng formation of a glucose actually ang kwanan nito ang ang point lang nito no under gly glycoside formation uh, is that there is formation of ang nangyayari kasi dito is nagkakaroon ng formation ng sugar and non sugar component and usually the bond that connects the sugar the sugar structure and uh, with that of a non sugar is a glycosidic bond no a glycosidic bond so glycosides are stable in basic solutions because of their acetals in acidic solutions glycosides undergo hydrolysis to produce sugar and an alcohol okay sugar and an alcohol kaya nga tawag dito sugar plus non sugar portion no so this is your your sugar is your glycone and then the other one is your aglycone which is your non-sugar preferably alcohol yung kanyang alcohol yung kanyang tawag natin dito um, functional group no? na meron which is a non-sugar okay, kaya glycone plus aglycone do you follow again um, what we need to remember here when we talk about glycoside formation, it is the for it is the addition of or it is the combination. If we talk about glycoside, it pertains to the formation of glock of sugar plus a non-sugar component. And upon hydrolysis, upon hydrolysis, there will be breakdown of the sugar component, which is your glycone, and there will be separation of the non-sugar known as the aglycone. And usually class, um, under sa pharmacoglucy na, na subject namin, itong non-sugar component ng ating glycoside sa mga plants, no? sa mga plants, sila yung merong tinatawag dating merong may mga therapeutic significance no? or therapeutic uh, value, kumbaga. Do you follow guys? No? Um, yun lang yung ibig sabihin nito no yung may mga may mga constituents tayo or chemical constituent na may composition of a sugar and a non sugar component known as your glycosides meron tayong tinatawag na like for example cardiac glycoside meron din tayong tinatawag na phenol glycoside meron din tayong tinatawag na alcohol glycoside. Ito siya, itong ito, 
In an acidic solution, glycosides undergo hydrolysis to form sugar and alcohol. Most likely, ang tawag sa kaniyang glycoside is alcohol glycoside kasi upon hydrolysis, it will yield alcohol. Yan. So, yun lang yung dapat natin tandaan dito. Uh, other than this, mga uh, medyo complicated na, na mga namings, no? methyl D-glycosides, uh, methyl D-glucosides in the sense, okay, punta tayo dito, methyl D-glucosides. So, ibig sabihin niyan, um, meron siyang sugar, dextrorotatory sugar, plus yung sugar niya, merong addition of, merong addition of, of R, which is methyl. Uh, just like this one. Just like this one. Um, hemiacetal. Yung acetal niya, possible dito na part. Meron siyang CH3. Itong R1 na to. Itong R1 na to is CH3. No? Which makes it a methyl glycoside. No? Sugar with a methyl group. No? Methyl deglucosides. Then, meron din tayo, of course, if it is in a ring structure, a six-membered ring structure, it is pyrinoside na ang tawag. Di na siya glucoside. But again, similar pa rin yung kan, ha? Similar pa rin yung ibig sabihin dito. Si methyl deglucoside tsaka si methyl alpha, methyl alpha glucopyronoside. Okay? Do you follow, students? Si methyl yes, D-glucose at glucoside tsaka itong alpha D-glucopyronoside and beta D-glucopyronoside. Magkatulad lang yan. It's just that in the structure of this one, this is in the Fischer reaction, a uh, Fischer projection, itong, itong glucopyronoside tsaka ito siya sa Howard pagkatapos meron siyang alpha and alpha and beta ibig sabihin yung hydroxyl group niya is either nasa baba or nasa taas no but then they are still the same so nagkakaiba lang sa configuration yun lang yung term yun lang yung kanito kabuuan nagkakaiba sa configuration niya okay so sugars that contains nitrogen on the other hand pag meron siyang NH3, NH2, no? NH4, in the, or NH, no? Doon sa structure, then it is a glucosylamines, okay? From the word itself, amines. Meaning, meron siyang amino group that replaces the anomeric OH or any OH group, uh, anomeric, di ba, ang anomeric OH is the one that is um, first OH, the anomeric. Kung may replacement gani o, o nitrogen group, then that is your gly gly glycosamine, no? glycosylamines rather. So adenosine, okay, di ba your adenosine is a nucleic acid, no? it's a nucleic acid, is an example of a glucosylamine that is also called as your nucleoside. So again, mag- Mag, mag vary food ang name sa structure in terms of the functional groups that being added due to reactions. No? Due to reactions. Some other reactions under your monosaccharides is enolization, tautomerization, and isomerization, where in dissolving monosaccharides in aqueous bases or base causes them to undergo enolization and a series of ketoenol taut tautomerization that leads to isomerizations. So, with that, um, uh, ang atawa lang endpoint ani niya, due to series of reaction, nagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin mirror images. No? Or that is your isomerization. Like, for example, like for example, um, hanap tayo na example. If this is your glucose, no? 
if this is your glucose, nagkakaroon siya ng mirror images. No? So, anong ibig sabihin ng mirror images? So, due to certain reaction, nabaliktad lang. Baliktad. It is mirror. Di ba? Mirror images. So, now if we try to if we try to look into this structure, ito siya. If we try to make a mirror image of this, no, or isomer. Okay. So, para, do, you, do you understand mirror images? Isomer or mirror image niya. So, marag, kumbaga, if you try to, like for example, guys. Um, okay. So, mirror images. It is just like, for example, if you try to pan your palm of your hands, no? if we try to ganyan, that is the mirror image. No? If we try to flip the, these structures together, nagkakaroon ng mirror image. No? Kaya, yung configuration na levodextro, na-degenerate din. No? Nagkakaroon ng isomerization in the long run due to chemical reactions. Anyways, we'll not complicate ourselves with those one no? because it's a uh, technical part. Na yun siya. Okay, let's proceed now to the other type of, of your sugar. Okay, your disaccharide sugars. We have your maltose, sucrose, lactose, which are the very important disaccharides that we have. Okay. So here, um, the disaccharides are sugars composed again of two. Uh, two monosaccharides that are linked together with a glycoside bond or a glycosidic bond. No? The physiologic important of disaccharides are physiologically important are maltose, sucrose, and lactose. So we already know about this one. No? Na, upon hydrolysis of your sucrose, no? it will okay, your sucrose will, will yield glucose plus fructose, diba? And with that, um, pag ganito yung nangyayari, this is known as invert sugar, which has, um, kumbaga, meron siyang bitter aftertaste. No? Bitter aftertaste. Are you familiar with kuan? Um, pin, uh, an, anong pangalan ng food na yan? Pinyatos ba yan? Pinat brittle, pinyatos. Familiar ba tayo dyan? Pinyatos po. Pinyato. Ay, no, no, no. Pinyato ba yan ang term? Yung pinat na may sugar coat. Familiar? Yes po, sir. I'm not sure with the name of that food. Pinyato? Hindi ko sure, ha? Basta ka na siya. Di ba, remember, if you try to, to, Juan, if you try to taste it, it would be much sweeter than the regular regular na sucrose stable sugar and then also yung caramelized sugar yun na to ito rin siya di ba caramelized sugar is your invert sugar and then also it would li ang isa sa pinaka distinct niya compared to your sucrose is that nagli siya ng bitter aftertaste do you follow nagli siya ng bitter aftertaste Naitindihan ba guys? So yun yung pinagkaiba ni sucrose sa inverted sugar na may composition of glucose and fructose. No? Mas sweeter si inverted sugar but at the same time, bitter yung taste niya. May bitter aftertaste. So fructose is strongly levorotatory and changes inverts. The weaker, uh, weaker uh, dextrorotatory action of that of your sucrose. So, yun yung nangyayari. No? So, si sucrose natin is sucrose natin is dextrorotatory. Pero, since 
ang invert sugar, mas nang ibabaw ang labor rotatory niya sa fructose. Now, fructose form of the invert sugar is more of a labor rotatory. Kaya there, will, uh, kaya there will be a change na yung coming from that of a sucrose in a dextro rotatory upon hydrolysis na i-invert siya nagiging level rotatory and it is due to fructose. Kaya siya naging invert sugar. And the more siya na mas naging matamis. Now again, the more siya nas naging matamis yung sugar due to fructose. Invert sugar na fructose. So that is for um, sucrose. No? Yan yung sa reaction ni sucrose. Okay. Okay, another one. So under disaccharides, meron tayong um, uh, tinatawag natin uh, connection between one monosaccharide to another. So these are examples of our disaccharides. No? We have your sucrose, lactose. Also, we have your lactulose. No? So we have your glucose plus fructose, glucose galactose, fructose plus galactose, maltose, which has two units of glucose. Um, we have also three halos, solubiose and sulfurose. Glucose to glucose yung unit niya, pero they differ in terms of the linkages, no? the alpha and beta, alpha and beta linkage from one of the car of the carbon number one, of the carbon of the one number one of the first na monosaccharide to that of the carbon number two of the second second na um, monosaccharide unit. Ito naman, for example, sa carbon sa carbon number 1 ni sa carbon number 1 ni um, so meaning yan um, ang connection niya is for example ito yung for example di ba ito yung yung connection natin di ba so if ever na yung connection niya is doon sa carbon number 1 mo on that of the carbon number di ba pag ano gan yung sa rule kanina kung taas siya alpha or beta pag pag nasa taas siya it's your beta 1 beta 1 Okay, beta 1, tsaka, for example, uh, what is that? Galactose. Hindi ko lang alam yung proper positioning ng OH, but of course, if we try to if we try to kind of galactose, so this is 1, 2. No? Ano? Ang counting ata niya is hindi siya dyan. Sorry, sorry. Ang counting niya is, di ba, merong, merong isang carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ganyan yung kanyang, ganyan yung kanyang counting. Um, this is your beta, 1, 4. Now try to check on the structure. Now try to check on structures of your disaccharides and try to check on the linkage no? as to the number, what number of the carbon. Basta again, itong mga glycosidic linkage is based on the number of carbon. Carbon number one of the first mono, carbon number one of glucose, carbon number two naman doon kang fructose. No? And then for example, for, uh, for lactose, carbon number one of your of your glucose and then carbon number 4 naman ni galactose. So beta and alpha means kung unsa ang direction niya, taas ba or baba. Do you follow? 
Kasi pa lang tayo alpha and beta anomers na projection. So that is for the linkages. So please be familiar lang with this one kasi popular board exam questions for this one. Now, if you have biochem in your board exam is what is the linkage that connects your um, glucose and galactose in lactose? Ganyan. No? Mostly ganyan yung ito yung usual questions in the board exam. Yung sa linkages nila. Okay, to continue. Okay, that is for disaccharides. And then we have also your uh, polysaccharides on the other hand. We have your polysaccharides or other term for polysaccharide is that they are known as your glycans which consists of monosaccharides that are joined together by like glycosidic linkage pero marami na more than 10 units no it could be either linear or it could as well be branch chana structure no so polysaccharides that are polymers of a single monosaccharide are called as homopolysaccharides so ibig sabihin ng homopolysaccharides for example Glucose lang talaga. Glucose, 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 etc. Ang glucose siya. So, ibig sabihin, homogenous. Do you follow? Ibig sabihin, it's homogenous. So, therefore, homopolysaccharides. Okay? If it is more, made up of more than one type of monosaccharides, like a combination of glucose and galactose, glucose, galactose, etc., long chain. Then, therefore, it is heteropolysaccharides. Do you get it? Do you follow, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. So, homopolysaccharides are classified on the basis of their monosaccharide units. Consisting of glucose, monorim, uh, monomeric unit is called as glucan. If glucose lang tahat, like this one, glucose lang, that is glucan. No? Consisting of galactose units naman, ibig sabihin niyan, galactan lang siya. And so on. Thus, there are three important polysaccharides, all of which are glucans. No? Very important kaya itong mga glucose units natin kasi ito yung mga stored sugars natin. No? Uh, three important Polysaccharides that are classified as glucans are your starch, okay, your starch, uh, which is the storage of polysaccharides in plant, or it is the principal foods reserved for plant. You have your glycogen, the storage polysaccharide in animals, sa atin, no, sa muscles, basan man naka store itong glyc glycogen, di ba sa muscle, di ba? Um, makikita to siya sa skeletal muscle natin. At saka sa saan? Aside sa skeletal muscle, saan pa nasustore ang glycogen, guys? Again, aside from the skeletal muscle or sa muscle natin, saan pa nasustore sa body natin yung glycogen? Students. We have two main, kuan, two main storage of glycogen in the body. Liver po. Okay. And as well as your liver. No? And then we have also your cellulose, no? which is a serves as a structural material in the cell wall of your plants. So again, these are examples of your um, poly, um, um, polysaccharides under glucans, which is a homoglycan. No? Homoglycans. No? Meaning, ibig sabihin niyan, okay, homoglycan or homopolysaccharides. Homopolysaccharides. Yan. Saccharides. Or glucans. No? We're in, again, itong tatlong to, glucose lang talaga. Na chain of glucose. Glucose. Either linear siya or branch. No? Yung ating starch, it could be either linear or branch, no? Si starch natin.
example of example of plant which has rich which is rich in cellulose guys um, we have your kangkong leaf remember na ang atong body um dili kay ta wala um pag ang atong ginakaon na food is rich in cellulose um remember that our body is not capable of Okay, is not capable of producing much of enzyme cellulase. So therefore, pag, for example, mo kaunta o kangkong. Kisa na ba yung nakakaog kangkong? Tanan ba nakakaog ng kangkong diri ah? Yes, po, sir. Yes, sir. So since our, since our body is not capable of producing much of that cellulase, pag mag dumi tayo, still nandun pa rin yung parang leafy leafy structure have you have you tried have you observed that one bakit buo pa rin bakit buo pa rin yung green green leafy vegetable na yan when we eat it kasi nga lack tayo ng cellulose who can break down cellulose to glucose do you follow naintindihan ba So with that pag cellulose ang ato ang ginakaon nadaday just lang natin hindi siya naaabsorb pag yung food na component ng food na kinakain natin is more on na siya cellulose component hindi yan naaabsorb ng body hindi yan na hindi tayo nakaka-generate ng glucose diyan kasi wala nga tayong enzyme that can break down cellulose to glucose na wala tayong cellulase so with that We just can it. We just digest it in a way na nababawas lang sa body natin or nadudumi lang natin. Walang naaabsorb or walang na-utilize na glucose. Do you follow students? Yes, po, sir. Okay. Yes. Sige, let's proceed. Okay, so na-determinate na siya sa body natin. So buong-buo pa yung minsan yung dahon na yan, no? Pag kina pag nagdudumi na tayo. Siguro hindi natin masyadong nakikita kasi baka nasa inner part ng ating poops, no? Kailangan pang durugin yung poops para ma-observe, di ba? So, yun. Um, okay, let's proceed now to amylose. So, amylose is a component of that of your starch, no? Um, ganito. Let's make it more simplified. Okay. <laughs> There are two types or component of your starch structure. No? Uh, we have your amylose. We have your amylose or your beta amylose. And we have your we have your amylopectin. Okay? Amylopectin, which is your alpha amylose. So um In terms of structure, in terms of structure, your amylose or beta amylose, okay, or your beta amylose is linear. So straight chain lang siya. No? Straight chain lang siya wherein the connection of the glucose is in an alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. But when we talk about amylopectin or alpha amylose, branch na siya no which is alpha 14 and ang connection niya from one monosaccharide to another is alpha 14 and then ang kaniyang tawag natin dito another alpha 14 sa linear sa linear niya na part pagdating niya sa branch mag-shift siya sa alpha 16 connection no nagshi-shift siya sa alpha 16 no in every okay 25 to 30 units sorry 35 to 30 units so ibig sabihin niyan um merong straight chain merong straight chain of glucose up to 25 no in an in a bit a beta anomer na perspective. Ay, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Not beta. 
in a alpha anomer perspective. No alpha, so straight chain na paslant. No straight chain siya pero paslant kung fish. Kung Howard projection ang atong gamiton. Then after sa ika-25 or 30 units niya, nag-shift ang iyahang branch na connection to alpha 1-4 and then straight chain na naman yan siya and then magbabranch na naman and then straight chain na naman. So kumbaga, parang zigzag na siya. No? Parang zigzag. No? Or if ever na kuan, anak na. Unlike sa unlike sa alpha 14 lang na kuan na dili branch linear lang so marag ana lang dili siya pa ana lang slant lang ang iyang structure sa starch so muna siya ang kuan no it's either ang iyang component is string linear lang siya na starch or branch yun yung pinakaiba lang uh, doon sa starch natin okay So again, this is a composition of your starch. Okay? Composition of your starch. So amylose is a polymer of alpha-D-glucose molecule linked with an alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. A continuous unbranched chain is your... Okay, a continuous un unbranched chain is your amylose. Pag branch na ganit siya, amylopectin. Okay? Do you follow students? Do you follow on this student? So again, dalawang component ng ating starch. Amylose component, linear. Amylopectin, alpha amylose, branched. Ang ating kuan, um, in terms of the, in our laboratory or sa laboratory ninyo, saliva natin has Amylase, particularly beta amylase enzyme. So with that, kung beta amylase enzyme shudder for, it could hydrolyze amylose. Do you get me, students? Kung beta amylase enzyme, then therefore it could hydrolyze or break down the glucose of your amylose component. Pag alpha amylase siya na enzyme, then therefore it will break down amylopectin. Do you follow? Nakuha ba guys ang concept? Again, that is for starch components of starch in your polysaccharide. Okay ba guys? Have you got it? Regarding starch? Students? Apa sir. Okay. Sige, let's continue. Now let's proceed to glycogen and inulin. Okay. So glycogen of course is very important. No? As a storage glucose in human. No, as a storage glucose in human. A storage form of carbohydrates in animals which are more highly branched than starch. No, branch every 10 units. So, ibig sabihin nito, kung si starch is yung branch na is yung branch na is parang ganyan. Ah, sorry. How will I? Uh, ganyan. Kung ganyan ang kang starch, ang kang glycogen is more branched. More branched siya kasi in every 10 units. Oh. Yung kanina, di ba, amylopectin, every 25 to 30 units, nagkakaroon ng branch in an alpha 1, alpha 1, 6, di ba, na glycosidic bond. So with that, mas branch siya. Okay. With that, if we try to check If we try to check glycogen, um, iodine test for glycogen, it will yield um, wine red color. No, it will yield wine red color for glycogen. For starch, naman, uh, for starch, 
uh, dito, uh, you have this, I think, in your laboratory as well under carbohydrates. We're in um, under this the positive result, no? Amylose with starch. Uh, no, no. Um, test for starch, usually ang ginagamit is iodine test, no? Iodine test for starch, no? Like for example, meron tayong starch, then we drop iodine or kailangan pang si starch i-dilute with water and then i-heat muna para ma-hydrolyze konti ba? No? And then we try to add iodine TS, iodine TS with your starch. No? Um, if yung kanyang color na ma-produce is deep color, uh, sorry, uh, not deep color, but deep blue color, if deep blue color siya, then that is the press. Ang mostly ang component ng starch na yan is meron siyang presence of amylose. Okay? Pagkwa naman, um, amylopectin naman, no? pag amylopectin naman, ang result niya is reddish brown. And that is amylopectin. Do you follow, guys? Nay laboratory na ba kayo sa activity sa carbs? Nag-laboratory activity na ba kayo sa carbohydrates niya? Students? Nag-laboratory na ba kayo under carbs? Hindi pa. Murag sa lipids pa man, Guru Mr. Last na mag lipids pa. Ah, lipids pa lang. Okay, so Opo. possible na ipa, kanina siya ma-perform na ninyo siya, starch, no? Then pabsi pakwaon mo ayo din TS ni Ma'am Jevy sa lab. Drops lang ilagay. Then it could yield either deep blue or reddish brown. So ibig sabihin kung reddish brown, mas daghan ang amylopectin. Mas daghan ang amylopectin portion or component dito sa starch na naa ninyo na sample. If deep blue gani, again, mas daghan ang amylose component na structure sa inyong starch na sample. Ana na siya. Okay? Do you follow, guys? Kindly take note of this one. Ha? This is very important in your laboratory as well. Okay? Proceed na ako sa next part. Okay. So, inulin or your hydrous inulin is a polymer of fructosan. To measure renal glucose, ah, ito yung parang medical significance niya. To measure renal renal glomerular, sorry, to measure renal glomerular filtration, na si inulin. So inulin is a polys again. Inulin is a Polymer of fructose, of fructose. So, ibig sabihin niyan, series of fructose na chain. No, that is a fructose. No? So, with that, it is a polysaccharide of fructose. Where do we find inulin? Saan ba ang source of inulin natin? Um, inulin can be found, okay? Inulin can be found in tubers, a tubers, sa roots, Okay. Um, particularly of what plant? Tubers and roots of dandelions. Are we familiar with dandelion flower? Dandelion artichokes. No? Yan na mga plant. No? Are rich in inulin. Ito, tubers and roots of dandelion artichokes. And of course, again, um, what makes it, okay, what makes it, um, Able to measure renal glomerular, glomerular filtration in the sense that your inulin is readily soluble with water. So with that, um, kung um, mas madali siyang filter or mas madali siyang um, kumbaga, 
uh, how how do we when how do we if if ang ganito siya since it is readily water soluble no if ever na matrace sa imuhang blood level ang inulin no ibig sabihin yan there is something wrong, wrong with the renal glomerular filtration kasi hindi niya na filter via urine no hindi niya nadaan via urine itong um inulin kasi nga water soluble na siya therefore it will should it should be eliminated but if ever that there will be pre traces of inulin in the system then therefore there is something wrong with your renal function yan due to its readily solubility with water again that is for inulin inulin okay next we have is your cellulose no your cellulose so Again, your cellulose is a glucosan, so series of glucose, 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 etc. na length cage. Most abundant carbohydrate, which is a component of the plant cell wall, as of what I have said. No? Take note that um, your cellulose, as what I have mentioned earlier, that we don't um, digest. No? We don't digest cellulose because we don't have cellulase enzyme. Then therefore, pag nagpupup tayo, usually itong mga plant, um, leafy vegetable na kinakain natin, minsan buo pa no? when we poop no? or nagdudumi tayo. Kasi wala tayong cellulase enzyme. Do you follow, students? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's proceed now to the okay, still in cellulose pa rin tayo, no? Uh, meron tayong tinatawag na reagent that could be used no, to um yung only reagent that can dissolve or can break down cellulose is what we call as your sweet serous reagent, no? Sweet serous reagent. It is a laboratory reagent that could break down cellulose to glucose. Common source of common source of cellulose is cotton, the cotton plant. No, the scientific name is Gusitium hirsutum. No, Gusitium hirsutum, and meron siyang mga yung products niya derivative of derivative products of cellulose are the following, which has both pharmaceutical. Um, significance, no? Uh, yes, industry and pharmaceutical uh, significance, like your methyl cellulose, ethyl cellulose, and cellulose acetate phthalate. So, bulk laxative and suspending agent, symethyl cellulose. So, um, since it is a bulk laxative, kasi nga, di ba, si cellulose hindi na da, hindi siya na absorb. So, um, your cellulose will form a bulk of your dume dun sa colon. So, mas nababawas natin siya properly yung dume. No? Bulk laxative. Then, a suspending agent in some preparations, ethyl cellulose binder sa ito ang mga tablets. Bunang natin yung mga lingi na tablets, compressed tablets. Film coated. Also, cellulose acetate talate. We have this, tinatawag na ito na enteric coated na tablets, no? Ang purpose, okay? Ang purpose sa enteric coated na tablets or enteric coating is to prevent drug in the stomach pH. Kasi our, our, our stomach is acidic, no? Acidic siya. There are drugs that are sensitive to, there are drugs that are sensitive to acids, so kinakailangan siyang i-coat, no? Kailangan siyang i-coat ng enteric coated uh, and that material is your cellulose acetate talate, no? In order to prevent the drug in the stomach acid para ang ma-destroy once na ma-expose siya sa, sa stomach acid na to yung drug is yung cellulose acetate. Then pagkatapos, hindi siya na-destruct, doon na siya sa intestine mas na kwan mas nadudurog yung gamot. 
and maabsorb siya doon sa intestine. Kasi of course, it is our intestine that is the major major organ for absorption din naman. Okay? Do you follow, students? Papa, uh, sir. Okay, so yun yung purpose ng isang intercoated reagent like your cellulose acetate tablet. Prevent the drug in the stomach pH because that drug might be sensitive to pH, to acid pH. Okay. Essential diseases uh, uh, which is related to um, carbohydrates are the following. Okay? Malapit na tayong matapos class. No? Um, five slides na lang. Tapusin na natin to. Okay, essential diseases. Diseases associated with carbohydrate metabolism includes diabetes mellitus. No? It is the metabolic disease cause that causes high blood sugar in okay, which is due to the press uh, due to the uh, problem of our insulin, which the hormone insulin moves sugar from the blood into your cell to be stored or used for energy. So ibig sabihin yan, si insulin mo yung tumutulong para yung glucose mo maging glycogen, no? maging stored sugar siya. And that would lessen the level of blood sugar. No? Blood sugar in the blood. No? Uh, blood sugar, rather. So, yun. So, while diabetes, your body either doesn't make enough insulin or can't effectively use the insulin it does make. Okay? So again, ang purpose ni insulin is to store the, the sugar in the muscle, in the liver. Do you get me? Again, the question now is, since the si, since si insulin yung hormone na nag-store sa sugar in the form of glycogen sa tong muscle o sa ang um, liver, kinsa po ang nag-breakdown ani? Kinsap unsa pud na hormone ang nagbreakdown an ng glycogen nato. That's my question now. Anong hormone naman yon? Students. Kung si insulin siya ang tigkuan, tig generate o complex carbohydrate. Epinephrine sir. Epinephrine. Glucagon po. Yes, your glucagon. Sila yung parang opposite yung action. Si glucagon, for example naman, if masyado, if masyado ng marami yung naproproduce na glycogen in the body, of course, na, uh, the brain will give signal naman. To pro or kumbaga, if na, if na sense ng, if na sense na mababa na masyado yung blood sugar, which causes what is so called as hypoglycemia no hypoglycemia or low blood sugar in the blood or low sugar level in the blood rather so with that it will signal to release more of that glucagon where in the action of glucagon is to break down those sh complex sugars in the skeletal muscle and in the liver to break down into glucose. And with that, mag increase na naman yung blood sugar. Do you get me? Si insulin, nagpapababa ng blood sugar. Si glucagon, nagpapa-increase ng blood sugar. Do you get me, students? So that is the wonder, that is the wonder of that of endocrine system. No? Kaya among all the system, guys, among all the systems sa body natin, I really like endocrine system. Talking about hormones, no? You will see how homeostasis no, sa body natin. Lalo na sa hormone. Performance ng hormone natin. Okay, ito siya. A healthy, okay, a healthy, um, saan ba na sisikrit ang, kwan? Ang ating insulin, it is in the pancreas no in the pancreas we're in uh, under healthy pancreas it produces insulin then therefore it allows it allows um, as insulin binds to its receptors it allows the glucose to be stored into the cell 
particularly in the liver at saka sa skeletal skeletal muscles, right? And then also for type 1, um type 1 the pancreas failure to produce insulin. So kung ganun, hindi na sa store sa cell natin si sugar. So with that, kailangan mag kailangan mag-inject ng insulin. No? Kaya yung iba nagkakaroon ng insulin injections and so on. Then we have your type 2. Your um, insulin dependent, okay, type 2 diabetes. Um, we're in, okay, nagpreproduce ng insulin, but the, um, but nagpreproduce ng insulin, but the cell fails to respond to the insulin, uh, insulin property. So hindi niya, hindi niya na -re recognize na hindi na -re recognize ng receptor ng cell si insulin so kaya lesser lang yung sugar less sugar lang yung na, na store so therefore still nagkakaroon pa rin ng high level of glucose sa system or sa blood natin Again, hindi na re recognize ng receptor ng cell kung saan na store yung sugar, of course, si insulin. No? So that is the problem under type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Do you get me, student? Yes, po, sir. So, yes, po, sir. So in return with that, no, ang, action ni, ang action ni Kwan ni glucagon ang nangyayari. More of the glucagon lang yung nangyayari kasi nga medyo merong defect si pancreas na abnormal yung nagagawa na insulin or walang magawa na insulin. So kaya nag-increase yung blood sugar sa yung blood sugar. Kasi kung well function lang si pancreas, definitely it would definitely it would decrease blood sugar. In case naman kung si glucagon, in case naman kung si glucagon yung nagmamalfunction, of course, masyadong mababa naman yung blood sugar. Ayaw, delikado rin yung hypoglycemia. Okay? Delikado ang hypoglycemia, delipa, delikado rin yung hyperglycemia or diabetes. Kung mag-hypoglycemia naman, delikado rin yan. It would lead to hypotension, um, loss of conscience a uh, uh, loss of kan gani um minsan uh, fatigue and among others actually marami siyang effect ang hypoglycemia may iba nga na pag hypoglycemia is parang na out vision na out yung vision no kasi kulang pala sa sugar do you get me di ba have you noticed that one sa mga movies sa mga sa tv no minsan Bakit kaya bigla siyang nakuan? Bakit kaya bigla siyang na himatay? Kasi nag-hypoglycemia pala. No? So lack of sugar. And then pag ganun na lack of sugar, connect-connect na rin 'yan sa other na mga problems like um nagkakaroon ng lockjaw, nagkakaroon ng muscle stiffness kasi nga kulang ng ATP, kulang ng sugar energy. Okay. Proceed tayo sa next one. We have your galactosemia, which means that there is high level of galactose in the blood, refers to a group of inherited disorder that impair the body's ability to process and produce energy from sugar called your galactose. When people with galactosemia ingest foods or liquids containing galactose, undigested sugars build up in the blood. Okay? And with that, anong nangyayari pag there is presence of galacto galactose in the blood? It could lead to brain damage. It could cause the eye to form cataracts. It can cause jaundice. It can cause enlargement of liver, which could damage the liver, causing jaundice. And then kidney damage. No? If a galactosemic infant is given milk and metabolized milk sugars, 
build up and damage the liver, eyes, kidneys, and brain. So imagine how fun it is, no? How, what do you call this? How problematic it is, no? Especially, uh, nangyayari kasi dito is, especially for babies that is incapable of metabolite, wala yung, tan ba? Wala yung, hindi naka hindi na synthesize yung body ng bata ng enzyme na maaring magmetabolize ng galactose. Do you get me? Pag walang again, pag walang enzyme na maaring magmetabolize ni galactose or hindi na develop ba sa bata. But this is rare, no rare lang naman ito. It is just like it is just like with Another one, which is your lactose intolerance. Sa milk pa din, di ba? Di ba pag nagkaroon ng lactose, intoler karoon ng lactose intolerance yung tao, ibig sabihin yan, um, walang enzyme na lactase or hindi masyadong nagbibuild up ng lactase enzyme doon sa body ng tao. Kasi it na parang nagkakaroon ng diarrhea, nagkakaroon ng diarrhea pag umiinom ng gatas. Do you do you can do you follow guys? Sir, I I have a question, sir, about this. Mm. So since they ano hindi nakapagproduce po ng lactase yung ano na enzyme, is the body ano trying to get rid of the lactose through diarrhea or reaction talaga siya? Um, get rid of. Kasi hindi siya na absorb, hindi siya na absorb. So binabawas mo lang. Uh... Mm. Binabawas mo lang siya. So, thank you sir. Hindi kasi hindi siya na breakdown din eh. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yan. Okay. It is a rare okay, puta tayo dito. Glycogen storage disease. It is a rare condition that changes the way body uses and stores glycogen, a form of sugar or glucose. Wherein glycogen is the main source of energy in our body, glycogen is stored in the liver and when the body needs more energy, certain proteins called enzyme that breaks glycogen into glucose promoting tinatawag nating glycogenolysis no pag ganun again it promotes glycogenolysis breakdown of glycogen to glucose glycogenolysis okay so we have here no carbohydrates in food it should be digested and it should be well absorbed in the body you uh, with the enzymes that could break it, no? or enzymes that could facilitate absorption of these uh, carbohydrates, and then somehow in the form of glucose, uh, it will be stored by uh, um, it is stored via the muscle, no? some will be in the fats and in the liver in the form of glycogen. No? So with that, nasa store yung glucose sa body natin. Okay. So how is it, um, pag ganun na nasa-store siya sa body natin, there will be glucose, decrease in glucose utilization, and there will be decreased sensitivity to insulin. Na decrease sensitivity to insulin kasi nga, mababa yung level ng glucose sa blood kasi nasa fats mo na. And opposite of that one, in order to break down, in order to break down glucose, there should be lipolysis process. Na? Lipolysis. So as to the muscle, na? increase protein degradation, okay? decrease protein synthesis, decrease glucose utilization, and there will be decrease in sensitivity to insulin kasi nga na store na siya sa muscle yung glucose so it so hindi ma-detect na kailangan mag release ng kasi lower blood sugar lower blood sugar so therefore it will not be sensitive it will not be sensitive to release of insulin no but rather it will be sensitive to glucagon kasi merong border eh merong border if mag-reach sa border na, na 
bumaba na talaga yung blood sugar, then that would give signal para mag-release ng glucagon to reverse the process. So glycogen storage, okay? Um, digestion and absorption of your carbohydrates will increase glycogen storage, okay? And with this, uh, from from glucose to glycogen, the process is gluconeogenesis. Do you get me, students? From glucose to glycogen, it's gluconeogenesis. Pag glycogen to glucose, that is your glycogenolysis. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, oh, sure. Please take note of the process, the breakdown niya. Okay. Then, okay, going back to lactose intolerance, digestive disorder caused by inability to digest lactose due to the absence of enzyme lactase. The main carbohydrate of our dairy products, such as the milk, no? it causes various symptoms of bloating, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. So people with lactose intolerance don't make enough of the enzyme lactase which is needed to digest or to break down lactose. Kaya na dudumi lang natin or napupuks lang natin yung lactose or yung gatas, no? Walang na-absorb. Okay. So with that, that's the end of our discussion for carbohydrates. Are there any questions that you would like to ask before we'll end our class? I'll be sending a copy of this one, of this PowerPoint presentation in our GC for you to for your referral, not for your referral. Any questions, guys, students? No, for sir. Okay, I hope you are. And so far, po. Okay, I hope you have learned no sa atong discussion this afternoon, and please do prepare for a quiz on a quiz on Saturday, and then pagdating natin ng Monday, you will be having your pre-final exam already. Kasi I think the pre-final was set last week. Nag-pre-final na ba mo sa obang subject? Yes, sir. Yes, po, sir. Okay, so, okay rin na no. Delay tagamay kay late nang puta naka-start dito, di ba? Um, anyways, you'll have your pre on Monday next week. Do you get me? Do we have yes, class? Sir. Do we have class? Sir, election po. Yan, sir. Election, sir. Okay. Delay na naman po. Um, or sa Saturday na lang. Kasi holiday man ninyo. So, Saturday on that week, next week, you'll have your exam. Then, siguro, ibigay ko na rin in advance yung next topics natin for finals para di tayo masyadong madelay on the next days. Okay? Yes, sir. Happy, sir. Okay. Sige. So, with that, if there are no questions, uh, let us have our closing prayer. no? And then, after the closing prayer, kindly have your log out in our chat box through log out, then your family may later after our prayer. So for the closing prayer, may I request Miss um, Juanites, is Miss Juanites around, Julian, to lead the closing prayer? Is Miss Juanites around? Or how about Miss Aguilar Root? Is Miss Aguilar around? You cannot turn on your mic. Okay, noted. How about Ruth? Is she around? Uy, hello. Tapos naman si Miss Ruth. Or can I have Miss Lindo Angel? Sir, ako na lang po, sir. Sino yun? Si? Ako po. Dala Rosa po. Okay, sige, sige. Can you lead the prayer, please? Thank you. Guys, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us once again, Lord, to learn and 
know about um, these things, Lord. Lord, we are grateful for the things that you've learned, we've learned, and we thank you for, sir, Lord, for teaching us these things. Lord, um, please keep us safe and watch over our family and friends. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, with that, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening for the whole duration of our discussion. Um, can you have your log out in the chat box and pwede na rin kayong mag-exit after what? After that. Thank you, po, sir. Okay, thank you, and God, God bless. bless. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, po. Thank you, sir. God bless, po.